Belize is home to over 200 plus individual keys and islands. And in today's video, I'm gonna break down the key difference between San Pedro, Ambergris, Key Belize, and the smaller island of Key Cocker, Belize from a few different standpoints. We're gonna be talking about food. We're gonna be talking about the mood and vibe of the islands. We're gonna be talking about nightlife. We're gonna be talking about the beaches and where to chill. We're gonna be talking about the activities. And of course, we're gonna talk about the real estate market. So let's dive into this. Of course, we'll start with the most important thing, the general mood and the demographics of each island. Pedro is the largest island in Belize, Ambergris Key. It's 24 miles long. At its widest point, it is about three miles wide. Versus Key Cocker, which is approximately 4.5 miles long. So quite a bit smaller than Ambergris Key. The population differential, Ambergris Key has about 25,000 people. That can vary depending on which season of the year we're in, because we do have fluctuations with tourism. And also people that are relocating here, maybe snowbirds that are temporarily here versus Key Cocker, which has a much smaller population of approximately 2,000 people. So big differential there. And that actually translates into the mood of each island. What you'll notice about San Pedro is it is one of the busier areas of Belize. So you have more options, which we're gonna dive into in the other sections, versus Key Cocker, which is really more of a laid back backpacker vibe. And what I'm gonna be doing in the upcoming weeks here is going and filming around the island of Ambergris Key, which I live on, and also going down to Key Cocker so you can see the direct comparison firsthand. Whether or not you're living in San Pedro or Key Cocker or you're visiting, a big factor is gonna be, what are you gonna do? Do you have activities? Do you have options? Where do you go? So first, let's talk about the activities in San Pedro. If you're visiting here, the top activities are gonna be going to Whole Chan Marine Reserve, going to Shark Ray Alley, where you literally are swimming in an aquarium. You go, there's nurse sharks there. You see all different kinds of fish, snapper, grouper. You see a lot of spotted eagle rays, and it is quite the experience. If you wanna have more of a beach vibe, beach setting, you have all of the places on Boca del Rio, which is where you literally drive your golf cart down the beach, places like hurricanes to chill at, or you can go to Secret Beach for the day, take it easy, kick back, and hit all the different bars at Secret Beach, which we've covered in depth, so you guys know about those. Then you have stuff like the Iguana Sanctuary, the Barcade. The Barcade is a really cool spot if it's raining, because we do have a rainy season here, and being able to go to places like the Barcade and play arcade games, shoot the basketball game, have some drinks there at the bar, it's a great option as well. When you look at Key Cocker, on the other hand, you also have Shark Ray Alley, which you can access. The islands are very close. It's about 5.68 miles away, so they're very close. So you can access Shark Ray Alley as well. If you are taking it easy for the day on the island, one of the places you'll probably go is the Split, which has the little jump. It has the Lazy Lizard. You have a bunch of different bars just behind it, like the Sip and Dip. So that's kind of gonna be the spot where you go to party for the day or you go to relax, I guess. Then you have feeding the tarpon, which is a big one, going to the leeward side of the island there, holding your hand out and having a tarpon jump out and grab this out of your hand. So both have good activities. The big differential I would say is you do have some more options being inside in San Pedro and also a wider array of outdoor activities just because the island is quite a bit longer. Like we just talked about Rocky Point. You can go explore all these different little pockets of the island. Both islands you can go fishing, but again, a few more indoor options I'd say is probably the biggest difference and having just a wider array of options in San Pedro. So let's talk about the food and restaurant setup in each place. Ambergris Key, if you watched our Ambergris Key or San Pedro travel guide, you'll notice that we have hundreds of restaurants on the island that range everything from, you just wanna get some cheap eats, you know, roadside street tacos, roadside burritos, jerk chicken, all the way up to fine dining and fancier restaurants that you can go to for your dinners. So in Ambergris Key, you have a lot more restaurants. Like I really can't emphasize that enough. Versa Key Cocker, which is home to one of my favorite restaurants, 
asked it for cash. So, but beyond that, the selection is somewhat limited. What I will say, the one stretch right by the key cocker letters there with all the barbecue, we covered it in our key cocker video. That is some amazing cheap beads that are just so well done and the energy there is always good. But from a food and option standpoint on your dining, it's really no comparison. You're gonna have way more options in San Pedro. So come out, explore, try a lot of the different restaurants. Quickly to give you some of my top recommendations here, I would say LV's, Giotto, Victoria House. Um, there's a new spot called Paradigm that we've been going to frequently, which is fine dining, really amazing stuff. And if you have any more questions about restaurants here, go check the San Pedro video out as well. But from a key cocker standpoint, that barbecue and the pasta per casso, top recommendations. Next up, let's talk about the real estate market. A lot of people ask me, Will, where should I be looking within the country of Belize? And I think the entire country is a great option. Key Cocker and San Pedro both have great real estate opportunities. One of the biggest differences between the islands and going somewhere like the mainland is the limited supply of available land within those areas. So what do I mean by that? Well, Belize is a large country. 46% of the country is dedicated to National Park and Marine Reserve. But if you were to open up Google Earth right now and zoom in on Belize and take a look around and see how much of the country is developed, you're gonna find that almost none of the country is developed. So there is so much supply of available developable land on the mainland versus when you look at the limited supply on the islands, that's one of the biggest assets that both of these islands have. So the next factor that I would look at then is what are the tourism stats for each location? Because when we're making a real estate investment, we're looking at a couple factors. First factor would be, what is the potential for equity appreciation? Is my property gonna go up in value if I buy it now? And the second factor I'd say is, what is my potential for cash flow? So when you're looking at both of these cases, the market is driven by tourism. A certain amount of the people that come to Belize, stay here, will choose to invest in the market, therefore increasing the demand of property with that limited supply, which drives our real estate values up. Also, the same thing goes for cash flow. If you're looking to rent a place out, those tourists are going to be the people that will rent your unit out because these are nightly rental markets typically, so you're not looking to do a monthly rental, you still can do a monthly rental and do quite well on it because there is a lot of openings on both of these islands for monthly rentals because typically people will go for the nightly approach. But in any of these cases, those tourism stats are going to directly impact what amount of people are going to be renting your place. So I've got the BTB, the Belize Tourism Board's website up here, and it talks about the total tourism stats going to each location. So currently, for 2019 to April 2023, actually we have first 2023 estimated visits, 27% of the overnight tourism arrival went to the island of Ambergris Key, while Key Cocker received about 11%. When you're renting a place, there's two factors you wanna look at. Your occupancy rate, which those first stats I just showed you are gonna impact that. Then you wanna look at What's the price of the rental? Then you can calculate based off of those things minus your expenses, what your return is gonna be. So if I go Key Cocker Hotels here. So what you guys are gonna notice here is that the typical hotels, I've got the first three that pop up here, $78 a night, $130 a night, $60 a night, $55 a night. So it looks like the average is somewhere around $70 per night because it is more of a hostel backpacker island. That's the whole energy of the island. Whereas a place like Ambergris Key, which we're gonna look up now, San Pedro Belize Hotels. I hope you guys can bear with me here while I pull this up. You're gonna notice we have a wide array of luxury. We do have some more entry point and we also have the, the mid tier properties as well. So. What I'm looking at right now, you have Alaya at 414, you have Victoria House price, which is not listed, you have 180 a night for Ramones Village, um, you have Mahogany Bay typically for around 250 to 350, 400 a night, you have, and that's for a single casita, you have 224 for the Sunbreeze, so. Overall, and we can probably pull the exact stat from the BTB here of what the overnight 
average prices in each market, but you're gonna notice that San Pedro has a higher overnight average price. So after we've established the tourism data and the prices for rentals in those markets, what is the potential right now? You know, have I missed the boat in one of these? Are they both still starting out? And I would say on this one, it's really somewhat of a wash. You can find affordable lots in Ambergris Key with financing. You might find some in Key Cocker. It is a little more limited in that area just because the island is only four and a half miles. So when I'm investing, I'm gonna give the nod in a big way to Ambergris Key because of those factors. But again, both are great options for investing in the Belize real estate market. So, if you're traveling to Belize, should you go to San Pedro or should you go to Key Cocker? Well, my advice to you would be to go experience both islands, go walk around Key Cocker, take your time to really live that go slow mantra, which is the mantra of the island, and explore around, go feed the tarpon, go to the hostel areas, go to the lazy lizard, go to the split, enjoy all of that, and then come to San Pedro and really experience the larger island as well, so you can really get a taste of both places. But that's my quick comparison. If you guys do wanna see me go around San Pedro and go around Key Cocker for a longer form of this video, firsthand with interviews, get in the comments section and let me know. And as always guys, I can't wait to see you in the next video and hopefully down here in paradise soon.